Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 56. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. I normally try to release these videos on the first of every month, uh, so this will be the 56th edition of it. However, I just wasn't able to get it out this time, so it is coming a day or two late. But regardless, the total market cap of the entire asset class is now about $2.81 trillion, whereas the fair value logarithmic regression trend line is at $3.522 trillion. This now represents an undervaluation of approximately 20%, 20.21% to be exact. Now, this outcome is something we've actually seen before, and we'll go through that. Um... And let's just let's just take it there. So, one of the things to remember is that the asset class does tend to go through through periods of undervaluation and overvaluation. And sometimes, you know, the asset class will be undervalued. Sometimes it'll be overvalued. Uh, but you can see there's sort of an ebb and flow to it. There's a, there's a method to the madness, right? There's some some method to the madness. And the general idea that we've talked about is that. And one of the one of these ideas we've talked about a lot over the last few years is that whenever the asset class is below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, you tend or or even around it, you tend to see Bitcoin dominance go up a lot. So there's basically a rotation from altcoins to Bitcoin. Whenever the asset class durably breaks above the quote unquote fair value, that's normally when altcoins start to outperform Bitcoin. Now, occasionally you'll get these fake outs where it'll look like it's going to go above it, but then it'll come back down and Bitcoin dominance will go up again. And that's what we've seen here the last couple of times. This is actually something we've seen before. It might not feel like it, but it's actually something we've seen before. If you go back to the first cycle, you'll notice actually that there actually, I guess if you go all the way back over here, you'll notice that there's a couple times where we poked our head above the fair value, came back down, right? Again, above the fair value, came back down. In the next cycle, right? Same thing, above the fair value, back down, above the fair value, back down, and then above the fair value again, and then back down and further consolidation. And that consolidation in 2012 lasted a long time. Um, you know, if you go look closely at how long it took the asset class to go above the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, it didn't even happen until February of the post having year. If you go to the cycle after that, this was the cycle that was probably the cleanest, just sort of a, a long time spent beneath the fair value. And then eventually when it went overvalued, it went very overvalued. But if you go back to the last cycle, which has, which has a lot of similarities in terms of monetary policy to this cycle, you'll notice some similarities as well, where it went overvalued and then it came back down. And then there was also this overvaluation here and then a large drop to well below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. And if you take the percent difference between the total market cap and the fair, fair value, you get this chart. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about a little bit clearer, right? You, you can see the red line. Anytime the yellow line is at the red line, that sort of represents the fair value, okay? Anytime it's well above it, you're very overvalued, and then sometimes you're below it, and then you're, the, the asset class is, is somewhat undervalued. But one of the things you'll notice is that throughout a lot of the cycles, there can be a couple of fake outs above the fair value logarithmic the regression trend line, right? You can see there was one right here in, in early 2012, and then another one in late 2012. You can see that in last cycle, there was a big one here in 2019, and then another one in early 2020. And then this cycle, we're sort of getting, we got one in March 2024, and then we got another one in December of 2024. So we actually have seen this a lot. One of the things you'll notice is that oftentimes the asset class will go down as far as about 60%, 50 to 60% below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. That's actually fairly normal for the asset class to go 50 to 60% below it. This cycle, the furthest it's really gone below it is around 40, 45%, right? Because this here had a valuation of 56%. So, you know, another 45% or so gets you up to that 100%, meaning fairly valued. So I think you could argue that, if anything, 
this cycle went less undervalued at this point than than the last two cycles, in fact. If you'll notice, right? The last cycle, you know, last cycle we had the pandemic, and we went to the point where the asset class was about 50% undervalued. But if you go to the actual wick that total market cap had back over there on sort of like an intraday wick, it actually was about 60 to 70% undervalued if you look at the intraday wick. If you go back to the 2015 cycle, you can see at one point the asset class was about 55% below the fair value. And during the intraday wick it had in late 2017, it was actually closer to 60 to 65%. The cycle that looked more similar to this in terms of only going down about 45% was this one over here in, in 2012. Okay, that's the one that, that basically only went that far down. Now, this chart can be confusing if you're not exactly sure of where it's coming from. Going back down to any of these prior levels doesn't necessarily yield a lower total market cap than when we were last at that level. Because the argument is that the red line is the fair value, which is, again, a monotonically increasing function. So the fair value of the asset class in 2022 was around $1 trillion. Okay, so, you know, to go to $1 trillion meant the asset class was fairly valued. If the asset class were to go to $1 trillion again, then it would be very undervalued. And that's sort of the way it works, right? It doesn't mean that just because you go to, you know, just because you see the asset class sort of drop back down on some of these charts doesn't always mean the asset class is going to a lower total market cap. Like, for instance, in 2015, you can see the asset class was about 55% undervalued, but it was still about 45% undervalued by the end of 2016. Now, the asset class was actually trending up more or less that entire time, right? From 2015 throughout, you know, late 2016. But because that fair value regression band was increasing, um, that's what made it so that it wasn't really that overvalued, despite the fact that the total market cap was, in fact, going up. So that's the way this generally works, right? The lower logarithmic regression trend line right now is actually around $1 trillion. Right? It's actually around $1 trillion. Um, the fair value is currently at around $3.5 So you can kind of see, see the differences there. But that's the way, you know, that's where we are right now. About 20% below the fair value. The, the worst we've really ever seen was probably the pandemic crash in recent history, where it was about 60 to 65% below the fair value. Um, and just, you know, not even that long ago. Right. In actually September of 2024, the asset class was around 35 percent below the fair value. So, you know, a lot of this is not is nothing we haven't seen before. Um, I think you could just argue that it's more or less the same thing over and over and over again. And and, you know, as market participants, it's easy to want to overcomplicate things and 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 try to try to make things something that they're not. But I, I would argue that you know, especially for, for people that continue to, to call for alt season and that sort of stuff, that doesn't usually happen until after the asset class really durably goes overvalued. Until that time, Bitcoin will likely just continue to sort of absorb liquidity from the asset class, right? I mean, I know there's days where Bitcoin dominance goes down, but for the most part, it has continued to trend higher for the last few years. And you'll also notice that for the last few years, the asset class has spent most of its time below the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. So, you know, right now the asset class is at around 2.8 trillion. I do think the, you know, the eventual target for me is around 10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? <laughs>